and the light shining and burning in your church. Grant through his intercession that we may be on fire with the same spirit and walk always as children of light. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in the of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. The man who fears the Lord will do this, and he who holds to the law will obtain wisdom. She will come to meet him like a mother, and like the wife of his youth, she will welcome him. She will feed him with the bread of understanding, and give him the water of wisdom to drink. He will lean on her hand, he will lean on her and will not fall and he will rely on her and will not be put to shame. She will exalt him above his neighbors and will open his mouth in the midst of the assembly. She will fill him with a spirit of wisdom and understanding and clothe him with a robe of glory. He will find gladness and a crown of rejoicing and will acquire an everlasting name, the word of God. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm responds, O Lord, teach me your status. O Lord, teach me your statutes. O Lord, teach me your statutes. O Lord, teach me your statutes. How shall a youth remain pure on his way? By obeying your word. Response. O Lord, teach me your statutes. I have sought you with all my heart. Let me not stray from your command. Response. O oh Lord, teach me your statutes. I treasure your word in my heart, lest I sin against you. Response. O oh Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O oh Lord, teach me your statutes. Response. O oh Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lip I have recounted, with my lip I have recounted all the decrees of your mouth. Response. O Lord, teach me your statutes. I rejoice in the way of your precepts, as I as though all riches were mine. Response. O Lord, teach me your statutes. Let us arise for the gospel of Lamb. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. So that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to behold my glory, which you have given me in your love for me before the foundation of the world. 
For Russia's father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and this know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel reading this morning is presented to us with one central idea. And the central idea is unity, which the Lord Jesus prayed for, for his disciples, for all his followers. And before we go deeper into the prayer, he shows the prayer going beyond those who are near him and reaching far ends of the earth and even after reaching far ends of the earth, the same prayer transcend going up again where he was going to be with the Father. And this is the last part of the Gospel of John, where this Gospel is coming from. So here, there are a number of things that we are invited to pay attention to. First of all, the Lord's Prayer was that we be united. Are we united? And if we are not united, either in our families, in the places of work, at our churches, what is the issue? And why are we failing to meet the goal? Many a time at church level, people are not united because sometimes they can lack good leadership from within. Sometimes it can be because of the force of the evil one that they keep entertaining themselves and it comes in from outside. We have to be watchful about those. Here, when Jesus prays like this, he's also employing us to always count on the glory that God has given him. And his glory has come through a number of stages. The first stage can be considered to be the cross which he accepted. Because he says these words, not because everything is going so well. No. Two things. One, his death is closer. He's going to face the cross. Secondly, the number of disciples that he has, there are very few. They are not many as we are today in the world. But despite this, Jesus has confidence. And his confidence makes him face the cross and eventually he gets into what you call the triumph. He raises above uh, the cross. Jesus lived life of what we call perfect obedience. And by perfect obedience, he never had his own will, his own deciding, like this is what I want. No. He let only what the Father wanted to be done, and that is the way Jesus lived. How many things today distract us again from following the will of God? The first one is inability to look for it. Because unless you search, you cannot find. If you don't know, the door not to be open. Nobody knows where you want to enter. So here, even when we hear about Jesus, the Son of God, the person in the Trinity, the one God, himself withdrawing and going into places are to be alone and speak to God in prayer. It reminds us that unless we pray constantly for that unity with God, we have a danger that we may not succeed in, dis in discovering or in identifying his will and trying to follow it. 
And without that again, the triumph that is promising here is a bit far uh, from us. Jesus points the idea of true witness. And he says, if we can believe in him and we be united, the rest of the world will understand that God sent him. And through that understanding is that God sent him, we shall be strengthened because of our belief. And that way, he will live in us, and then the Father will live in him. So you can imagine, using the imagery of the egg that all of us know, you see the shell on top there, whatever color, and then you see the white egg somewhere there inside the shell, and then you see the yolk, whatever color, inside there. Who of these have the strength? It's the egg, because, I mean the shell, because the shell is being supported by all these other layers of the egg which are inside. God interior, Jesus following, and then we are there, wherever we are, at our levels of trusting him and struggling to do his will all the time. Finally, in the first reading, Sirach is pointing to wisdom. And for those of you who are female in this room now, you should be smiling in case you are not aware. Jesus, a number of times, the Son of God, is referred to as the wisdom of God. And here we are given the image of wisdom in a she. Wisdom in a female of a she is representing a woman, a mother, who is supportive, who is encouraging, and is doing all these things around a man uh, who is vulnerable, who can fall into error. And the point is, God's wisdom is out to reach everybody who is ready to receive him, sorry, to receive her. And in that process, each of us needs again to live a life of preparedness to work with the wisdom of God, because that's the only way we can have peace and we can have joy in our lives. My brothers and sisters, occasionally, we miss joy, we miss peace in our lives just because we don't discern, we don't follow the wisdom of God by not listening to her, having her to guide us. I want to give you this illustration. When you go to Genesis chapter 14, you find a story, a long story, about Abraham. And for Abraham, uh, one of his own uh, lying people, root is his name, he was taken by the forces fighting over the lands. And what happened, Abraham organized his own men, they went and fought a big war, and actually they won, and they got root rescued. And they looted a lot of wealth from those whom they fought, because they were successful in war. But what happened when Abraham got back, he only took 10% and gave Melchizedek, the high priest at Salem, and said, this is for you. For him he took nothing. Then from there, Abraham sits back and says, now, with root, there's nothing that I've received. Even after winning the war, the war everything I did not take, I left, because it was ungodly. Now, could I have maybe taken, or because now I have nothing here, now I don't even have a son with me here, and Eliezer, a slave, son is going to take over all my wealth. What is all this for me? Now, many a time, we can skip 
God's wisdom, it can miss us, we can miss it, because we regret over certain things in life. But a number of times, things that we regret over, somebody comes in and they says, you know what, I'm sorry, I feel with you. And very few people come and say, you know what, this has happened, but in God's wisdom, there is a promise for blessing, so you move on. Abraham, in that situation, one evening, that's when he gets the word that you know what, you'll have a son of your own. But this comes to him, after him, realizing that by leaving the things rooted and ignoring given what root would give him and giving 10% to the priest, Melchizedek, that is enough, and that's what he's supposed to do, is just wait for God's blessing. So I want to wind up on this by pointing to the fact that we become ready and prepared for God's blessing always by seeking his wisdom and relying on God's promises. Any moment we fail to do that, we get lost because we begin to depend again like on our own. We pray that God blesses us with his wisdom so she may guide us in every small thing and big thing that we do. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Pray my sacrifice in you as may be acceptable, the Lord our God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our gifts be acceptable to you, O Lord, on this feast of your holy man who lived a life of praise for you, and that we may receive our freedom with these gifts, so that we may be pleasing to you as gifts to you ourselves with our lives. We ask this through Christ. Our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. You see, right and just, and it is our salvation always and ever to give you thanks to the Holy Father, Almighty, and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, and through your saints you continue to enlighten us with their teaching and guide us with their prayers into your great goodness. So it's right that all your creatures serve you, all your redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all of the angels as in a joyful celebration we are claiming. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fond of all holiness. May for the for this gifts we pray. But send the your spirit upon them like they do fall. So they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the time he was betrayed and entered the willing his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, he brought to give the disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, the disciples ended, he took the child and once more giving thanks to the disciples, saying, Take this all of you and bring for me. For this is the church of my bride, the blood of the enemy, and the eternal of the land, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death for Lord. And, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as you celebrate the mode of death and resurrection of our Lord, the bread of life and the church of salvation, giving thanks and help us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you, humbly we pray that by taking over the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring out the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope. David, our bishop, administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are fallen asleep of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray. But with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints of peace throughout the ages, we may merit to be past eternal life and praise glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, of glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we are to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious, we grant this in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and self, from all these threats. As we bless hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And gracious, we grant her peace and in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord will be always. And with the Spirit. Session another sign of peace. The one Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ preserve us for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, as we honor Saint Bernard, work its effect in us, so that strengthened by his example and instructed by his teaching, we may be caught up in love of your incarnate word, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before the final blessing, we are going to bless the stations of the cross that are along our walls. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, we rely on your providence, and we know that by the way of the cross of salvation, by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for a blessing over these stations of the cross. So that those who follow them, they may be blessed in their lives, and may be strengthened and be preserved in the energy they need to follow Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to us that your way is not simple, but you wouldn't hide that from us. You made us aware so that we may come to you, knowing what we are following, and relying again on the promise. Bless the stations of the cross, so that all those who will follow them and count on your mercy, they may be with you again in eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mama, we.